Hey, black girls with fibroids fam. Um, I am looking like I'm looking <laughs> um, because I was going to go work out and then got a notification that my request for medication had been denied by my insurance company. And so I am sitting in the car because I was on the phone with the insurance company trying to determine why was my medication claim denied and, and the like. And so this video will talk about that part of it. I was already in tears. I pulled it together. <laughs> Because every video I post can't have me crying. Um, or I don't want to cry in every video I post. Um, but again, the purpose of this is really for me to be as transparent as possible. To try to give the entire span and kind of just a comprehensive look at the process of um, having fibroids, dealing with fibroids, trying to remove fibroids, trying to shrink fibroids, healthy options for fibroids, um, all the things that are there. And so that's what this video is about. I typically don't like long videos, but I know this needs to, 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 I know I need to be thorough with this video. So, um, let's start at the beginning. Uh, my name is Portia. Um, I was diagnosed with fibroids in 2014. Um, they were small at the time. My doctor told me, ah, don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Fast forward to 2016, my fibroids are growing. I'm in a different state than where I was diagnosed with them. Um, and the doctor asked, you know, what, what would you like to do? They immediately suggest um, having, um, a hysterectomy was, was mentioned even as early as that. Um, they asked about, you know, no one asked me about if I wanted to collect eggs, freeze eggs, none of that was mentioned, but the option of having surgery was the very first thing that was offered to me, which is a, another video for another time about how women of color, specifically, I know black women are offered um, hysterectomy, hysterectomies or um, options for um, decreasing fertility options or, you know, taking away that option altogether. So another video, another time. Um, but, um, said no. In fact, I had such a, I asked about alternatives to fibroid shrinking outside of having a surgery. I asked about natural options. Um, my doctor, um, was not really helpful in identifying any natural options for that. And so I went to another doctor, right? I have choices, um, even if they're limited. Um, so I decided to change doctors, found a doctor that I really liked. She was fantastic. And then she left the practice. Go figure. Um, and so I went from, um, from her to another Doctor specifically one that's focused on minimally invasive gynecological surgery um, because I, although I had seen several people have a myomectomy and the myomectomy is the removal of fibrosis surgery. Um, I'd seen kind of a mixed bag of people on in their treatment as well as um, their recovery. And so after reading on uh, several different options, having a minimally invasive gynecological surgeon, surgery seemed to be the best fit for me. Um, I've never had surgery before outside of oral surgery. And so just being really um, apprehensive, I guess is the best word to use on just having people just cut, cut my body open, which sounds really rough, but that's what they do. Um, so that was, that was that. So under the new doctor, we determined that I would need to take medication to shrink my fibroids um, because they're so large. My largest one is 16.5 centimeters um, and I have six of them um, with three being at least eight centimeters, three, four, five, no, four, three being eight centimeters, one being 11 and the other being like 10, right? Um, it is the equivalent, my doctor said to me, being about... 20 to 25 weeks pregnant. That's how large my fibroids are. And they are, they've tilted my cervix. They're pushing in my um, bladder. They are crushing one of my fallopian tubes. Um, they're impacting my back. All the things that are unpleasant. My fibroids are, they're, they, they whatever assignment they had, they, they, they killing it. Um, so that was that. So I knew back in 20, 2020, 2020 that I would need to take medication. I moved, I got an opportunity to go to graduate school um, in another state. Um, and so I moved um, for school. I quit my full-time job and moved for school, which means a new doctor, new health system, new insurance, new trying to figure all of this out. And so um, that is the journey that I'm on right now is, and sorry for all the shakiness, I'm in my car. 
um oh this is awful um i am um now trying to, to determine work with a new doctor work with a um, my new insurance as a student student insurance is a thing that's not done well um my, but my new doctor was suggested by my former doctor in north carolina because they went to school together and so i was thankful to find a doctor that did minimally invasive gynecologic surgery um and although this person is not a fertility like specialist and in, in that set in that um that's not the the sole goal but it is minimally invasive and that can be helpful for fertility purposes um if i so choose to do that down the line um so i had a four month wait period with this doctor <laughs> in the state just to get the first consultation um which was a, a a whole other video i've included on the site um but after meeting with the doctor was determined i would need to take a specific drug um or lissa this is not a promotional video because i've not taken anything um but that's the drug that was prescribed to me sent it over to my insurance um and they immediately denied it uh, they didn't tell me that i there's nowhere on the entrance card on the website saying i would need a pre-authorization and so it's been exactly two weeks now of trying to get pre-authorization um, for this medication. I just got an email this morning saying that my pre-authorization was denied. And of course it's frustrating because you've been waiting so long for medication that you need to have in order to have surgery, right? The, the medicine shrinks my fibroids and makes them smaller, more manageable to remove um, from my body, right? Um, and so that's what that does. Um, so I got on a call, I did what I normally do. I, you know, I sent the doctor's office a message asking, you know, did they give reason as to why I was denied the preauthorization person specifically. And then I called the insurance company and I want to say this, and I think it's important to say, I recognize and cannot ignore that my ability or the ability that I, I feel like I'm, I have, I, I'm not entitled to, but that I get to have to, to ask questions and challenge, I recognize that's steeped in privilege, right? Not only um, some form of economic privilege, but educational privilege. I recognize that not everyone goes to a doctor's office and feels inclined to ask questions or feels comfortable asking ask questions or that they can ask questions. And even if they want to ask questions, not knowing exactly what to ask or to be able to understand what's being told to them. And so I, I have to acknowledge that because I've been in spaces with people. Um, I was a mentor to some, some high school students and had gone to a doctor's appointment with them and or had waited for them when their grandparent was in a doctor's office and hearing the grandparent try to, re, to, re, to understand what was on a paper. It was just really, it was heartbreaking to see. And so I, I need to admit and, and be open in saying, I recognize I have educational privilege. I did not go with economic privilege from a U.S. standpoint, and I want to identify that too because there are, there are lots of privileges I do have uh, in a global context, um, and I don't want to ignore those things. And as well as I want to be honest in saying, from my vantage point, I did not have economic privilege um, in the U.S. context, right? I did have educational privilege, so I think that educational privilege has really impacted my ability to be able to understand, comprehend, ask questions, and feel empowered enough to ask questions when there's something that I don't understand, and I just need to acknowledge that. So sorry for that, that off the beaten path, but I feel like I need to say that. So I called the um, insurance company this morning and say, hey, you know, I was just told that I was denied. I need to understand why. Could you tell me why my claim was denied? And so I got transferred over to pre-authorization. And actually, to be quite honest, this person, I called this company five times. The person I spoke with was the most helpful um, that I've spoken with out of the, 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 the other times I've called, like the most comprehensive the most just like giving me what i needed and directly answering questions everyone else has been like oh we don't know let's put you somewhere else i'm like this is not helpful so shout out to that person i won't name them because i don't want any problems for them but um they gave me they gave me all the reasons as to why what they were looking for in the doctor's notes and that is important when you are when your doctor's requesting medication if there is a pre-authorization needed 
and the doctor sends over or the pre-authorization department sends over notes and the notes don't include the reasons that the comp that the insurance company specifies that they need your insurance claim your request for medication will be denied and that is really really important for me to say because if you don't know what they're looking for and the doctor doesn't know what they look, they're looking for, the doctor gives them information, you hear it's been denied. If you don't feel like you can ask questions or challenge or, or dig, dig deeper into it, well, you just take the denial, right? And if it's medication that you need, what happens to you after? So it's really important, in my opinion, to really understand what the pre-authorization is looking for. Now, in some cases, I, and I, this is my one and again, being honest and identifying privilege, I have never had to go through a pre-authorization before. Anytime historically I've needed medication, my doctor calls it in and that's it. And so this is really new for me. Um, but when I checked the website, when I checked on my entrance information, it never mentioned pre-authorization for any medications. Um, not that you don't need them, just I had never seen them listed anywhere. And so it's important to note that some entrance companies will say, hey, you can find this information online for your pre-formulated